Hi friends, uh, I'm Pia Lee, Community Manager of Discuss Agile Network. You might be already knowing uh, this year's annual conference is uh, scheduled on December 15th and 16th in Bangalore. This time uh, we have four themes for the conference. These are uh, Kanban, Coaching and Leadership, Hybrid Agile and uh, Personal Agility. And today I have uh, Vivek Ganeshan with me who will be presenting a talk in the Coaching and Leadership track. Vivek is an Agile coach and a DevOps coach as well, currently working with Solutions IQ India. And Vivek has been connected to us uh, for a long time. He has been a speaker and an organizer of Discuss Agile conferences from the year 2015. Welcome once again to the conference, Vivek. Thank you. Thank you, Piali. It's a pleasure to work with you again. Yeah, before we uh, moving forward, I would request you to tell us something more about yourself. Uh, maybe some new people who are uh, listening to you for the first time, they can know about you. Okay, uh, where to start? Okay, uh, my name is Vivek Ganesan and uh, I prefer to call myself as a, a what, a enthusiast of uh, any new thing that, come, that I come across. I, basically started with being an accidental scrum master uh, a few years ago and then somehow my career and the challenges that i <laughs> faced took me to a path and right now i'm working as an agile coach at uh, solutions IQ like accenture and uh, i am interested in working on um, human problems uh, with a little connection to technology also that is why you know uh, and, and and one more thing uh, I am a published author also. I have written a book, written and published a book called Blameless Continuous Education. And uh, this is pretty much what I am. Yeah, you can say that. That's, that's interesting to know about you. Uh, Vivek, the title of your talk is uh, Agile Manager's Guide to a Nearly Peaceful Night's Sleep. It sounds interesting. So what drove you to propose this talk? Okay, it all started, you know, when I uh, saw, st initially, when you see the Agile community, right, I started attending conferences, and then I saw a lot of negative emotion around the word manager over a period of time, where, you know, uh, people started blaming managers for each and everything. So that was one trend. And the second trend that I th uh, saw was I happened to be in a classroom where many managers were there and there some managers were talking about how they feel so irrelevant in this world of agile and uh, some people even went to the extent of saying that they are considering uh, vertical forming and mushroom cultivation as their alternate options if yeah. it it career doesn't go well and this doesn't ring a right bell and uh, if you see our uh, uh, agile frameworks, uh, they also do not uh, prescribe a role or they, they don't talk anything about managers. For example, if you take Scrum, it says, okay, Scrum master, project for product, product owner, and then the Scrum team, there is a manager here. This created a sense of unease in the manager's communities, what I understood. And then the more and more I talked about, I talked with them, and then more and more I worked with multiple organizations, I realized that managers have an important part to play, even after Agile comes to the organization. Even after teams are Agile, also managers have an important part to play. And I thought uh, it is Discuss Agile conferences and app forum to share uh, what I think about this issue. And uh, this is where it is that motivated me to propose this talk. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Uh, to start with these uh, agile frameworks, the prescribed role of managers, it's decreasing. But still, you can't uh, deny the necessity of a manager. There should be somebody. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So what do you think? Uh, like, what is uh, spoiling the sleep quality of the managers? Okay, so uh, as, as the talk suggests, I, uh, you know, start to think about, well, based on my discussions and conversations with managers, uh, first thing is that unease around uh, 
what do you say? Whether, whether my job is secure or not. If I'm a manager, my, is my job secure? Am I redundant? Uh, this is one of the reasons why probably managers don't sleep well. Maybe sleeping well or not sleeping well is just a, what do you say, added for a comical element in the title. But still, the it's question holds that, you know, that bothered them. Yes, it's, it's just to spice up the title so that, you know, many people like you can come and attend my talk in the conference. But still, the question is still relevant whether it bothers them enough that uh, they lose their peace of mind or not. And the reality which I see is that it is, that is one aspect of it. So the first point is whether their job is secure or not. And then the second thing is uh, they are, many, many of them, you know, are accountable for delivery still. Right. So in that case, uh, let us say you are managing a software team and uh, you, you are you are supposed to monitor whether things go right or wrong and people keep you asking different, different questions. And uh, it is very often in the software projects that uh, the progress of, a, let's say, something very important is green for a very long time and two days before the release, it suddenly becomes red. So these sudden heart attacks or sudden changes in weather, as I would like to call it, is another source of irritation. For example, if I'm a manager and I have a team working and uh, two, there, is, there are two days to release and I see that something that was in the green state, all good, all good, goody, goody state went into a very critical risky state. That spoils the quality of my sleep. That is the second aspect of it. And then there is this third aspect of uh, being uh, forced to do something that you really do not like. For example, uh, we are all good people. We are all, you know, we don't want to do mean things. But let us say you are in the middle of a release and then uh, something is critical, but then an employee comes and asks you for a leave, right? You as a manager are typically, you know, forced to do some things, uh, which may or may not be right, depending on the context. I don't want to have, hold a judgmental view. No way, to, there, there is no way to, what do you say? There is no way to handle these kind of situations, even after they have happened. How do you deal with it? How do you deal with the motivation loss of the team after, let's say, you have denied them their leave or asked them to work in the weekends or whatever it is, right? We do not live in a dogmatically, we do not live in an ideal world. We live in a world where people are still transitioning to a jail, right? In that case, the entire organization is not a jail. Maybe, you know, a lot of things are there. You, you can't just be dogmatic about managers and say, you should never ask people to work, or, you know, work in the weekends. All these things are possible. How do you deal with these things on an ongoing basis? How do you come to a state where you do not ask people to work in the weekends? So that is another thing that keeps, you know, managers awake at night, perhaps, from what I have heard from people. So th these are some small, small parts. And there are some more which will come probably during the talk where people will talk about it because it's going to be an interactive talk also. So let's see, I might gather some more reasons for your question to answer your question later after the talk. True, true. And uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. Sometimes it feels like the manager, he or she is uh, in between of uh, two forces, like from the management side, he is the responsible person. Uh, management will not go directly to the team. They will ask him, what about the release date? Uh, what was the status of the project and the um, uh, team members they will come to him with all their problem for example if i am the uh, team member and you are my manager i have come to you so i need a leave and uh, you denied no we have to finish this work by this weekend and you become the villain for me then yes and after that i don't trust you in your estimations because you know what i have already denied you leave i've become the villain i know that i'm the villain so i yeah. can't trust your estimation so i will keep monitoring you and I'll keep losing more sleep again after that <laughs> so it's a reinforcing negative loop. the most critical situation for the managers yeah yeah true uh, i have a question here uh, vivek uh, your talk it's a really very interesting talk so is this talk only for uh, managers or uh, other professionals like scrum masters, coaches, they can also join this session? Well, uh, this is going to talk about the life of a manager. This is going to talk about how managers live their life from what I have heard from them and anecdotal evidence. It is essential that everybody in an organization uh, if they do not live through it, they can at least understand what everybody goes through. 
right? For example, if I am a Scrum Master, and I understand that uh, a manager is responsible equally for running the current things and also changing the system. We might be actually able to empathize with him rather than saying, you know what, hey, I want you to do this change all of the world in a single day. You might be empathetic with that person and come with a, with a plan in which you can move things to ideal state gradually. So Scrum Master can actually develop an empathy towards manager or it's not necessarily towards the manager. It's basically towards the organization as the that you can't change things in a single day. You have to keep things running, which bring already bring revenue and slowly stick change to things. So that is one aspect that Scrum Master can develop or even a developer, development team member can develop uh, by hearing how uh, you know a uh, manager's life currently is and how they can change. And second thing, they can always go and tell their managers about what they learned in this session. Right. And then if I'm a developer, I attended this session, I learned some tips that I can give to my manager and then manager will be happy about you. Right. And second thing is you build a relationship of trust and not a relationship of transaction with your manager after that. Trust is not an easy thing to build, but this could be a first step. Saying that, yeah, I care about you, not just going and asking about me. Hey, you don't even care about me. You give it, give some things that you, he can use in his job. And it's it's all about transactions after that. Maybe maybe I'm not being very philosophical about it, but this is what I think. Everybody can benefit at least a little bit from this session. Yes. Nice, uh, very nice. Thanks, uh, thanks Vivek for uh, sharing about your uh, talk. I'm sure managers and uh, other professionals as well also are uh, waiting to attend your talk. After all, they can sleep well after your session. It's a yeah it's, after and not probably during my session. Yeah, true, true, true. So Please. thanks a lot for uh, being with us. Thank you, friends. Uh, thanks to all of you who are uh, watching us. We have many such interesting topics and workshops uh, on those two days of conference. To know more about uh, the other topics and uh, our speakers, please uh, do visit www.discussagile.com. That's the website. And yes, you can register there only. So that's all. Just do register and let's meet at the conference. Thank you all. And thanks once again, Vivek. Bye. Thank you.